this on this show once before. Jesus would be the grand marshal at the pride parade. I don't mean I about really, gay really people. I mean in that. every argument we have. But here's the weaponized religion. Here's my religion, question. But it's wrong. Mm -mm. If you're so afraid, why are you going over there? Yeah. It, if they scare you so much, leave them alone. When stuff scares me, I leave it alone. Mm -hmm. If I don't want to be bothered, I don't go there. See, that's the problem. You don't want to just have your feelings. You want everybody else to join you. And you know what? You can, you can scream, you can cuss, you can do all the things that you say. But you know what? Gay people are here. They're not going anywhere. There is nothing you can do. You know, you can yell and scream. But, you know, as as the Lord, as everybody was talking about, you know, made in God's image. Yep. I think we're living in a time where people have taken a self-righteous flag in the way they live and they have banged it over people's head. It, it, as someone who was raised in the church, it breaks my heart that people weaponize religion mm -hmm. in the way that they're doing. Mm -hmm. Because self-righteousness, which might seem kind of evasive when you look at it is the division of people it is these people are absolutely crazy and the shooting had nothing to do with christianity but because they are liberals and because they are anti-christ spirit-led uh, people they have to find a way to point the finger at christians they don't say anything about islam they don't say anything about all this other stuff that you know the, the, the rap culture you know, promotes. They don't say anything about that. It's always about the Christians' teachings and the Word of God. They hate it and they look for any opportunity to point the finger mm -hmm. and accuse Christians, which in fact they're incu they're accusing God as well. They're accusing God's Word. And who is the accuser of the brethren? The devil. And these are the devil's children. Now watch what Whoopi has to say. What you can you can scream, you can cuss, you can do all the things that you say. But you know what? Gay people are here. They're not going anywhere. There is nothing you can do. You know, you can yell and scream. But you know, as as the Lord, as everybody was talking about, you know, made in God's image. But except for there's none of that. No. Keep that. Bear in mind when you're trying to figure out where you stand as a human being, let alone a Christian. Okay, people of God, and uh, there you have it. Now, we see that this show is nothing but Jezebel's view. That's what I call it, and that's all it is. A bunch of Jezebels that want to come against the church, come against what the Bible says. And it's amazing how they always say, I grew up in church. I grew up in church. And some of the very ones who say that, who use that as their um, validation for being able to speak against the church are the very ones that did not know, the, that don't know the Lord. They grew up in the church. They grew up in the formality. But how much time did they really spend in the word of God and following Jesus Christ? Because for you to grow up in church, anybody can grow up in church. But if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you will go out and and leave the church and say that Christianity is not real all because of your lack of experience with God. And so they are they're quick to do this. You know, they say this stuff all the time and people always come against the church and always say things about the church and stuff. But yet they don't look at what the the, the perversion and the abominations that the world exalts. They don't look at the, the, the sins that the world exalts, the abominations, the perversions, you know, and they talk about all this violence, these gun violence and everything. All these violent attacks are, 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 are increasing, are increasing. But yet when you look at every single video game, when you look at all the movies, the John Wick movies, one, two, three, four, all the way to 85, whatever, look at all the violence that's in it. Look at the constant gun violence and shooting. See, the world is so... They're so blind that they're quick to point the finger at somebody, but don't even look at the things that they're exalting is coming back upon them. When you look at a nation that sits up here and exalts and kicks and screams when Roe versus Wade is overturned and then cry about the violence, but yet they're perpetuating the violence on innocent babies. They want the murdering of innocent babies. 
And so the world is, is deceived because the God of this world, the devil, has blinded them. And so when you hear these women and others like them, you know, you got people, you know, some and that, I, that I've seen that some of these ministers are nothing but liberals with a pastor's title on them. Because when it comes down to it, it's all about the skin color. It's all about the black man, black woman and all this, you know, uh, nonsense that, that that's what they preach. It ain't about the righteousness of God. It's not about the word of God. It's about dealing with the things about black people being oppressed and all this other nonsense. That's what they're for. That's what they're for. All this time they've been going throughout the years, claiming they're preaching the word of God and stuff. But now we're in this time, this this pivotal time, critical time, to where it's the skin color and the the, the echoing of the the black man or the black woman or the black race being oppressed. Now these liberal pastors, that I mean, some of these pastors are coming out showing who they what their true colors are and they're just pretty much liberals. That's it. They're they're liberals. They they know how to speak the word of God. They have a lot of charisma and say things to get the crowd going, to get the black crowd growing and all of that stuff. So they can interject their that that agenda and continue to regurgitate the narrative of the media. Uh the Lord showed me that the media is the one that's stirring, you know, the emotions of people across this country and even across the world. Because the narratives and the things that the media puts out, that these news media outlets put out, are what people are growing and, uh, excuse me, what people were feeding off of. And as a result, that's what's leading them in their, their emotional direction. That's leading them in their decision making. And I'm talking about people that are blind and that, that, that are spiritually blind and are spiritually dead. Now, for those that are following Christ, the Christians, when they gorge on the media, they're catering to their flesh. And, 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 what, and I'm not talking about the weather report, your local news media, where they just sharing information, what's going on in the city. I'm talking about these major news media outlets, the CNN, Fox News, all these different ones, MSNBC, the you know New York Times, all these different ones that are creating a narrative. They're constantly spearheading a certain narrative because they know it's going to trigger a reaction and a response in the multitudes of people. And as a result, when that response is being true, when that, when that reaction is being uh, 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 caused, then it's going to go throughout the land. Now all of a sudden, the politicians get under pressure to, to pass certain laws and other things because they want to try to get more votes and stuff. So you start seeing things working hand in hand with the medium. As like I said before, it's like the false prophets in the land that put something out there and people that are naive and deceived and are blinded, excuse me, by the devil will gravitate towards it and follow it. And they follow it and they hook, line and sinker. And that's why we're seeing the same stuff being done, perpetuated over and over again. All right. And so when you see things like the Jezebel view, by the way, I wonder if Maverick City is going to distance themselves from uh, from the view because they went on that show with Kirk Franklin and performed on that show. Now, this woman sits up there and says that Jesus Christ will be the grand marshal of the LGBT parade, LGBTQ parade. See these again. They 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 say that things about God and about Jesus Christ, and they have no relationship with the Lord, because no foolish person uh, would say something like that, you know, and, and and know what the Word of God says about it. And then you know Whoopi Goldberg, and you know her real name is Karen. Uh, that's the state she got the Whoopi Goldberg name from her mother when she was young in order for her to get involved in Hollywood. So all of these ones that are sitting up here talking about the black oppression, this and this and that, but they're the very ones that got involved in the industry in order to become rich and famous under white people, under or under whoever, you know. But anyway, you see what these people are promoting and they're constantly coming against Christianity as if it's Christians causing this stuff. But however, the person who did this this shooting at this nightclub, this gay nightclub, was non-binary, identified as non-binary. So it's one of their own from the alphabet mob that did the stuff. But that's the thing that they kind of ignore and push away. See, what I say, you know, when I bring up stuff about the media, it's because uh, 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 I believe it was just this past summer, there was a shooting at a nightclub or in Sacramento, California. 
African American males. I mean, it was a, a shooting out of the middle of the street and everything else, and people got shot near the nightclub and, and all this stuff. What did they do? Because of the whole narrative that they was being that was being pushed about the black people being oppressed, those shooters appear before. Uh, I believe they caught they caught two of them. They appear before the courts, had their day, you know, set for court. They were released on bond. They were released on bond back into the community. But because of the narrative that they want to push now with this whole, you know, gay nightclub shooting, oh, they, they hurried up and arrested this person and locked him up. Now, I know different states have different, you know, uh, uh, laws. And, you know, when it comes to uh, somebody that's got caught doing some kind of heinous crime, a heinous act, whatever. But I, I just find it interesting that in California, they released those black criminals. But then in in uh, in uh, wherever this nightclub shooting took place, I think in Colorado Springs, whatever, they arrested this one. They made sure because they want to make it again. They're pushing the narrative. Now they're trying to make it seem like that the LGBTQ community is constantly under attack, which is an absolute lie. But they have no problem pushing these drag queens on these kids. They have no problem when these kids are getting you know molested by these people. That are in that lifestyle. They don't they don't want to cover things like that. See, that's what I'm talking about, people. You cannot get caught up in a double standard because what this does is that people that gorge themselves on those on the news media, on these major news media outlets and shows like The View and watching CNN and all this other stuff, what you're going to do is you're going to start compromising the word of God because that voice is going to cater to your flesh and to your emotions. And they're going to put those images up there. They're going to put the images of the victims of that. Now, look here. I don't condone any of that. I think that is heinous. That is demonic. That is wicked. You know, to, 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 to mow people down like that with, 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 with a handgun. I'm not it. I'm not, you know, in any way saying that that's what they get. I'm not saying that stuff at all because that's, that's crazy. Whether it's happening to a straight person, a person in, 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 in that's, that's, that's gay a person who, you know, whatever lifestyle it is, you know, I'm not condoning anybody just going in and mowing them down, you know, shooting and killing people and stuff like that. That's demonic. That's of the devil. But I am going to say that it is something how the world, this is why Jesus Christ says that they will hate you because they hated me first. Because the world hates the gospel. Because these shows like The View, they hate the gospel of Jesus Christ. They hate when you confront sin. They hate when you call out sin or teach against sin and challenge people to repent. That's why they bring people on like Kirk Franklin, Maverick City, you know, uh, Joel Osteen. They bring people on there that they know won't take a stand against sin. Because they don't want to hear that. That's what I've been trying to share before about how these artists... You know, these these secular shows only invite the artists that they know is not going to take a stand against sin, that they know is not going to take a stand, against, you know, uh, for the word of God. That's how that guy Sway will will invite Lecrae on his show. And it, it's something Lecrae always make itself about, ch you know, church clothes this and church clothes that. But how many times does he ever stand against the secular hip hop music industry? Because he's trying to be a part of it. And now you got people out here talking about, well, Kanye West, he's being used by God. No, he is not. Quit saying that Kanye West is being used by God. He is not. He's being used to deceive folks. Okay? The word of God is being used by God for people to take the word of God and stand up to what Kanye West is doing. Just because he calls out some secular music industry that he's still making money off of. Just because he says his mother was sacrificed, I'm not a, you know, uh, 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 glad about any of that stuff. But he's the one that got involved in the industry for things for him to, you know, to come up with that conspiracy theory that that stuff happened. He's the one that got involved in that. Okay? And so all of this stuff, people, these guys, they're constantly, you know, uh, you, you, you're seeing the same thing being done over and over again and when people sit up there and say God is using Kanye West no he's and I, the reason why I say it's not because we got ministers that speak the word of God that have been calling out the hip hop music industry Hollywood industry for decades and people just have not been listening and now because Kanye West came out and said something about it 
all of a sudden that's really supposed to be bringing that industry down. No, it, no, it is not. Because he's benefiting off of it. He just benefited off of it just this past summer when he was recording with Marilyn Manson. So all these people constantly want to try to say God is doing it. No, he is not. He is not. Okay? The ones God is using are the ones that's living right. The one God is using are the ones that know what his word says and know how to stand against, stand uh, 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 for the word and stand against the nonsense that we're seeing out here in the world. And I, you know what? I was just thinking the other day, how many African-American so-called gospel artists what was I put it this way? Why is it that so many African American artists always get themselves to go on these secular talk shows? Why do they always go on these secular radio stations? Why is it that I I I really cannot see? Well, I have really can, have not seen one African American gospel artist that's just been straight gospel. They always start conforming to this world. You look at the, uh, they got the um, BET uh, Stellar Awards or something like that, you know, uh, coming up. And the lady Tasha Cobbs is on it. Getting on that world's platform all because of skin color. Going on to the BET, I think it's the, called the, the Stellar Awards or, or, or something. Some African, predominant African-American awards coming up. And now you got a gospel artist on performing on stage and going to be up there and just, you know, with all these other secular artists, why do you think they invite them on there? Again, because they're not going to speak against what they're doing. So why is it that every single, like you see Fred Hammond, Ty Trippett when he was out, you know, these guys was hooking up with Snoop Dogg. You see Kirk Franklin, of course. You see what the stuff that he's doing. You see what Maverick City is doing. You see, uh, um, Marvin Sapp, you see, he recorded with R. Kelly. You see all these guys always constantly hooking up and yoking up with the world. You see what Lecrae is doing, hooking up with the world, secular artists. I mean, it seems like all the gospel uh, artists, musicians that are African American, always gravitate towards the world, always get on the secular uh, uh, world stage or secular uh, radio program. To make themselves more popular, it, it, it shows that there's a deficit that's there. Because a lot of these guys, they, they, they miss their affirmation of a father. Having their father in their life, there's a void that's there. And they use and they try to, you know, they, you know, many of them may have started off right and just walk with the Lord and everything. But somewhere down the line, because that area of lust and, and, and desire for these things of this world crept into their life. And was not dealt with, they go right out there and go after the world and then try to merge the world with the church. Well, they're quick to come against the church and come against those in the body of Christ who hold things up to the word of God and rebuke them and correct them and stand against what they're doing. So now the church is bad, but they want to say the churches need to stand up and be the church. But yet when the church does stand up and be the church, they get mad at that as well. I just found that that is very interesting how you see, like I see a lot of, you know, Caucasian Christian, Christian you know, uh, gospel artists. I don't see them on the Country Music Awards. I don't see them going, getting inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I don't see them doing this. I'm not saying that they, that they don't, but I'm just noticing that amongst African Americans, it seems like nine times out of ten, the majority of African American gospel artists always get out there and start conforming to the world. Why is that? Because in uh, if you want to say, I don't like saying African-American community, but amongst the African-American race, there is too many broken homes. Homes without fathers, children being, uh, you know, uh, 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 affirmed by the world and stuff. And, you know, the mother, she's doing what she got to do to try to raise the children and everything. And I'm not knocking out because I know God can turn anything around for the mothers that are single mothers or fathers that are single fathers that are doing the best they can trying to raise their children up in the Lord. Look, I'm simply saying this is that there's too many homes that are shattered and it's impacting the lives of these young people. And as a result, when these young people get older, they start running after the things of this world. Because they did not have the voice of a father in their ear. They did not have that structure. There was something that was missing in their lives. 
Okay, I'm not saying all young people that just because that they grew up without a father, they're automatically just going to chase the things that well, I'm not I'm not saying them, but I'm saying that there is a trend that we're constantly seeing. And it's something how the very ones when I, when it comes to African Americans, how there's so much violence amongst our young people, amongst young adults, black males, black females. It's because look at what is being embraced. It's the hip-hop trap music culture. That's what many people are gorging and being raised off of. As a result, they're manifesting the very demons in that music. And they're manifesting it in the streets. This is the reason why you're seeing the acts of violence that you see. This is the reason why gun laws won't stop it. It's the reason why you, you, no matter how many people, mothers against this or, you know, uh, dads against this, it won't stop it. I don't care how many youth programs you try to put together. We're just trying to give them, get them out the streets, get them on the basketball court, get them in the ring, teach them different life skills. It's not going to stop it because this is spiritual. Because their hearts are not redeemed. It is Jesus Christ. That's it. That is the only one that will change the inside the inside the heart of a person of a young person to turn them away from sin boxing rings basketball courts football programs peewee football leagues yeah that may give them something to do but that's not going to turn them away from sin that's not going to turn them away from sin and that's why the world's efforts never work and they're always going to all they do is put a band-aid on like a on, on, on a bullet wound. Yeah, it may seem like it's working briefly, but then it's going to bleed out again. And so this is the reason why we're seeing the stuff taking place in our country. And I really believe that our country is under judgment. Because whenever you can uh, have officials over states, over counties, that are sitting up here kicking and screaming for abortion, that are sitting up here pushing the LGBT thing and, and drag queens in the in, you know, reading in front of the children, that country is under judgment because of the leadership of the nation is constantly pushing and exalting the abomination. And they will cater and bow down to the media, who is also the voice in the nation, in order to cater to to to, to multitudes of people because they want to be liked. The Bible says, if I look to please man, I cannot be a servant of God. I believe the Apostle Paul said that. When you look to please men, you cannot be a servant of God. Because in order to serve God, you're going to say things that's going to go against man. That's going to go against people in the land. That's exalting sin. That's living sinful lifestyles. You're going to go against your lifestyle that's going to conflict with their lifestyle because they're going to think that it's strange that you don't engage in, in the stuff that they do because you're a peculiar person. So I want to encourage you, people of God, stay the course, stay with the word of God. Don't get caught up in everybody who want to say who God is using and who God ain't using all this other stuff, because if you can't, if you can't find what they're doing in the word of God, God ain't using them. Not like that. Not in a way that's trying to wreck a whole industry like they think Kanye is doing. No, Kanye is doing stuff to bring attention to himself. This man, the whole last five or six years, he's been saying that he's a god, that he's the greatest musician of all time. And he's been saying all this stuff and made his way into the church, and now people are falling for it. I'm telling you, the Antichrist is going to have a very easy job. The false prophets has a, going to have a very easy job. Because people don't want to stick with the word of God. And they get caught up in somebody's musical ability. And because they have the charisma and they know how to draw people, draw crowds and everything, they just go ahead and think, oh, that must be of God then. Well, I mean, my goodness, what do you say about Jim Jones? He drew multitudes of people as well. And what did he do to them? See, people, this is uh, this is something that why we got to stick with the word of God because it's, it, it's serious. Because people are losing their lives and losing their minds at the same time. So back to this whole thing about Jezebel's view. Uh, this is where when you see, you know, the outrage. And that they, and when you look at the video clip on your own, you can see they, they're coming after Christians about it. 
they coming out of crazy. They, 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 they don't want any responsibility of, you know, hey, it's the it's the, it's one of their own that did this to them. See, these nightclub shootings, these happen all the time across this country. This stuff happens all the time in the nightclubs and stuff. You see it on, uh, uh, I watched, you know, these one uh, clips on uh, YouTube. This guy does, you know, self-defense and self-awareness and, you know, utilizing your firearm in the right way and all this other stuff. And he always shows these different stories, these different accounts of something happening, you know, in the land and why you should, you know, carry your firearm. And he says he's a Christian guy and stuff. And so, but he does these different video clips and he kind of, you know, breaks them down on why you should use certain defense tactics and why you should use certain firearms, or whatever. I forgot. I think it's called self-defense army or something like that. But anyway, he shows Every time, you know, African-Americans go into the club and all the cases take place, gunshots go out. People get shot. And so this is happening constantly. But see, the, what the news media will do is that they will show this. They will grab hold of this one. And as a result, they grab hold of this one. And, they, and, they, and what the news media puts out there with the narrative, it forces politicians to react and respond because now the people, remember what I said before, it triggers the emotions in people and that creates reactions. So now the people begin to cry out in the land. As a result, the politicians hear what the people are saying because of what the media has put out there. And now the politicians begin to move and start putting these, these, these crazy gun laws in place. However, when the African-American man who was just on trial defending himself, I forgot what his name is. But well, he looked real crazy with the long dreads, and he ran he ran his his vehicle through your know, crowds of people, killing about five to eight people. But yet, do you see them outlawing vehicles? Do you see them putting a ban on certain vehicles so people can't drive through the crowds? Absolutely not, because they know it's not the vehicle's fault. They don't take that brand of vehicle that that man used a van or a truck to mow people down. They don't take the, you know, we 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 going to ban four trucks now because this person is using we we looked we looked at a study and more people are running people over with four trucks so we going to start banning four trucks. They don't do that. They don't do that because they know how crazy it is. It's the same thing with some of these gun laws because it's not the firearms fault. The firearm is not getting up and just going to do it. It's the person behind it. It's the person behind it. OK, and so when people uh, when they when 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 the media put certain things out, they don't they're not going to cover every nightclub shooting that goes on across this country. The only ones they're going to cover is when it's dealing with the LGBT or if there's like a mass shooting, you know, where like 10 people that got, you know, shot, whatever. But even if that happens, they're going to give it minimal you know, coverage, but when this LGBT stuff, oh, they're going all out. You're going to hear about this for the next couple of weeks now because they want to push the narrative that they are the ones, the LGBT are the ones getting attacked, but they didn't, they didn't, they didn't care the show and they didn't, they didn't want to bring up when, when, uh, uh, um, those LGBT, uh, members, people in that homosexual lifestyle beat up a priest because he was holding up a sign. They, they, they won't show stuff like that. You know, when they're in the schools and stuff and boys identifying as girls and them boys and them whooping on girls and almost beating them unconscious. They won't they won't show stuff like that because they're creating a narrative because that is one thing that they know Christians are supposed to stand against is their lifestyle. And they will bring and you watch The View and other talk shows now are going to bring certain passes on their shows again. And get them. They're going to confront them and challenge them. You're going to see some of these same ones that's been on. They got the huge church platforms, the huge social media platforms. You're going to see them cower down and tuck, tuck their tail between their legs and bow down to them. They're going to bow down to Jezebel. Because they don't want to say what the Bible says because everything is so sensitive now that the moment you say something that these liberals or that, you know, the world does not like, oh, they're going to call you a bigot. They're going to be afraid of, of, of losing their subscribers. They're going to be afraid of, of losing multitudes of people that, that come to their church because they never took a stand against it in the first place. And now when they, these radio or talk shows call them out and, and put them, you know, uh, on blast on national TV. Oh, they, 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 those members are going to be looking, okay, what is he, what is he going to say? Because some of the members in those ministries may not even be saved. 
They just go in there because they like the congregation. They like the nice signs. They like to be a part of something big. And if you say the wrong thing, now all of a sudden that's going to show if you're a hireling or if you're truly a man of God. Because if you say and stay what the word of God says, then if those people leave, they wasn't with you in the first place. They was just there filling up a seat. But you, I'm telling you, watch what I say. They're going to do it again. These shows, these radio programs, the, the, the very popular ones that people watch on TV, they're going to start interviewing certain pastors, especially in their city, or they're going to bring certain ministers that are very popular in the earth, very popular in the nation of America. They're going to bring them onto their shows, their, their shows so they can confront them. And you watch how these certain ones begin to stutter and begin. First of all, they shouldn't be going on with you in the first place. They shouldn't be going on any of these secular talk shows and everything anyway, because they don't want the gospel. They don't want the word of God. That's why Jesus said, don't cast your pearls before a swine, lest they take it and devour you with it. Oh, excuse me. They will, they will take it and they will trample over it, meaning they have no respect for the things of the kingdom of God and you sitting up there trying to go on that show, you ain't reaching them. You're not reaching them. You're going on there for your own notoriety. You're going over there to have a conversation, but it's not going to produce anything because you're not going to stay with the, what the word of God says. You're not going to stand for the things of the kingdom. You're not going to quote Romans chapter one. You're not going to say anything about first Corinthians. Uh, I believe it's chapters uh, six and 11, first or second Corinthians chapter six and 11, I always get them to, you know, jumbled up. One of them says, uh, don't be unequally yoked with non-believers. The other one says, do not be deceived that the young rice will not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither uh, fornicators, covetous ones, you know, homosexuals, you know, all this stuff. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. All right. So I believe it's first Corinthians chapter six, verses, uh, verse 11. But you won't hear these ministers say that they always got to give. Or these gospel, you know what? It won't just be the ministers. It'll be gospel musicians. And everybody, yeah, it's so sad. We just got to love each other. They'll try to say some universal statement. Watch what I tell you because it's going to happen. They're going to try to say some universal statement. They're going to try to say some something that sounds really very philosophical and sounds good to the ears. It sounds good to the emotions. They're going to say that. They're not going to quote the scripture. They're going to, yeah, we just got to love. Yes, it's haters. And, 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 some, and, 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 I, and I get it. Some Christians can be so harsh and so cruel and everything. Why? Because we say the truth. That's, that's harsh and cruel. To speak the truth. To say what the Bible says about a matter. See, no matter when somebody is walking in the spirit of offense and unforgiveness and looking to come against the body of Christ, it makes no difference. You can say descriptions in sign language, and that's not no no mock towards anybody that's deaf or hearing impaired or whatever, but you can say the scriptures in sign language and people will still get offended by it. You can draw a picture and show a man and a woman equals children, a man plus a man, and put a circle around them with a slash on it and show that it equals nothing. They will get offended by it. You don't have to say nothing. It's because the people that walk in unforgiveness and bitterness, they have a hatred towards Jesus Christ and the word of God. They're going to find offense towards anything that you say anyway. So you might as well go ahead and tell them the truth. You can whisper it to them. Hey, the Bible says homosexuality is a sin and an abomination. I just wanted to leave that right there for you. You can write it on a note. They're going to find a way to get offended by it. They're going to be angry about it because... Demons and people don't want the truth. And when you speak the truth, just like the apostles did, when they drove demons out in, the, in, in Ephesus, you see them people rise up in an uproar. Not the, they, not the fact that they, they, they just seen some, you know, some, some phenomenon where an evil spirit was driven out of a person that was a part of that worship of Diana. They rose up in an uproar, Hail Diana, Queen of the Ephesians. So they could care less about the truth. So that's why ministers and gospel musicians should not be going on these secular talk shows at all because they don't want the word of God. These secular radio stations, they, 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 they constantly promote the profane, nasty musicians. But yeah, you got gospel rap artists trying to go on them. Why? Because of clout, because they want the, how? What are you going on there for to try to defend the church? 
They don't want to hear these things about the church. The radio hosts don't want to hear that. They they have that conversation with you. And as soon as you go off the air, they'll go right back and they're pumping all that demonic music right into their airwaves again. For they father the devil. So when we when we see stuff like this, this is what these talk shows are going to do. They get somebody on there that they're going to make bow down to them. And then they're going to continue to, 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 to attack, you know, Christianity. They don't say anything about Islam when Islam does wild stuff. They don't call it a hate crime when you got these, you know, the Asian people being brutalized by African-Americans in New York and on the East Coast. They ain't calling them hate crimes. But the moment that they do something, when the LGBT, all of a sudden it's a hate crime, even if it's one of their own that does it. See, now that, that kind of confuses their little narrative a little bit because now they got to put a spin on stuff. Because it's not a straight person doing this stuff. It's somebody that calls themselves non-binary. And this is not something that, you know, to it, it, all I'm doing is showing you the world's double standard about things. And so that's why Christ was able to go to the cross and not say one word. Because his actions spoke louder. And when people saw that, they see, you know, the government said, hey, I, 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 I can't even... I can't, this man is innocent. He hasn't done anything wrong, but who cried out? The people in the land, the religious leaders, the, they stirred the people up in the land to cry out and say, crucify him. Crucify the ones, crucify the Christians. They're the, they're the cause for all this stuff that's happening to the LGBT community. The Christians are the reason why things are happening in the government. The Christians, they, they, they're blaming everything on Christians. OK, but every time a hurricane comes through Florida, every time some kind of natural disaster takes place, every time some flood like Hurricane Katrina, all that stuff happens. Who's the ones that step up to the plate to help those communities and help those in the land? And what do these same shows say out of their mouth when they see the devastation that happens in certain parts of this country or, or across the globe? Our thoughts and our prayers are with the victims. Look at him. They try to sound real religious then. Their thoughts and their prayers are with the victims and with those in Florida, with those in Oklahoma, with those in Texas, and everything. They always get on there and try to say religious, you know, cliches and stuff. Knowing good and well, they don't pray at all. They don't pray at all. So now we see even with the gospel music industry. So we see how Maverick said it's not in defense of that guy, uh, Dante, at all. But the same way you're going to hold him accountable, hold yourself accountable because you went on the view yourself. You went on there with Kirk Franklin and now you have a woman that sits up here and says that Jesus Christ will be the grand marshal of a gay pride parade. This is who you performed in front of. This is who you perform for on their stage and on their platform. Let's see if you distance yourself from them. This is what we're seeing. Sometimes people do stuff because, hey, we got to take a stance here. But we're not going to take a stance over there because that impacts our platform and how we're getting out there, how we're getting liked by the world. So people of God, we have to stay with the word and don't get fed. Don't feed off of what this nonsense media, worldly media it's saying because they're only out to do one thing, and that's to push a narrative every single time. Create a narrative and push it. And only those that don't have the Holy Ghost and don't yield to the Holy Spirit, they're going to fall for a hook, line, and sinker. And it's going to alter the way that they think. It's going to alter how they, how they, how they conversate with others. And it's definitely going to seduce and deceive people into believing a lie. And walking after a lie, trying to hold on to Christ and claim Christ, but walk after a lie at the at the exact same time. And you can't do that. You cannot do that. So I just wanted to take the kind time to uh, uh, share this with you. Hope you had a you know a great holiday with your family. For those of you that do Thanksgiving and all that stuff, you know I love spending time with the with the family and just having that time off from the hustle and bustle of work and all of that other stuff. But uh, just watching, you know, games and all that stuff, but, uh, definitely wanted to take this time and, um, 
just kind of share and hit on some things. This is not some one, you know, uh, targeted video, but I wanted to address a couple of things because I've seen things happening, you know, with <sighs> uh, Kanye West and the things that people have been saying, and, you know, and he's out there with the, you know, the Hebrew Israelite doctrine and stuff and people saying he's being used by God, but he's pushing the Hebrew Israelite doctrine. It's just, it's just crazy. It's crazy the things that people say, just because. I mean, my goodness, I'm, my, some of my videos have called out the hip hop music industry, you know, and stuff. And so if people been doing this for 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 quite some time, and all of a sudden Kanye come out and do it. All of a sudden, this oh he's been used by God. It's, it's just nonsense. It's ridiculous. And uh, uh, if anything. You can say that, you know, God is allowing that lying spirit to go through the land to deceive people because people are believing lies anyway. And God will hand them over to their own desires. It's like he did in Romans chapter one. OK, being wise, they became foolish. All right. So uh, and also just want to show those clips from the view to let you see firsthand. You know, just how crazy, you know, you, you all see it. Y'all see how crazy the world is and how the, the double standard is, is is out there and how, how, how wicked it is and how they always trying to point at Christians. They trying to point at the, at the body of Christ and even some of the ones in the gospel music industry, you know, gospel rap music, whatever they point the fingers at the church, you know, because they, they, they can't submit to anything. They don't want accountability. They just want to go at things their own ways. You know, just like in the book of Judges, when the men was doing things after their own desire, what they thought was right in their own eyes. That's what the book of Judges says. Men was doing things after what they uh, what they thought was right in their own eyes. And that's what some of these musicians do. They don't they don't answer to anybody. They just go on tours and stuff and hook up with each other. And then they title it as kingdom work, kingdom business. And and there ain't nothing kingdom about it because they bring in the, the profane artists along with them. And they get on the BET shows and go to the Stellar Awards and all this other stuff and, 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 and get in, involved in everything that the Bible says don't do. They're saying it's okay to do it now because it's promoting unity and love. It's a bunch of garbage and a bunch of nonsense. So um, people of God, stay with the word. I just want to encourage you that this stuff that these people are pushing out here, especially the news media, is for a reason. It's for a reason. And they only highlight certain things for a reason because they know they're going to trigger, trigger those that are carnally minded. And we know the multitudes of people, is, is you see more of them, you know, in the world that are, that are not saved. Those are the carnal minded folks. A lot of the politicians, the carnal minded folks, you know, a lot of, a lot of them, not everybody. All right. And so you, when you got people that are, that are politicians in Georgia, saying that they're pastors and stuff and they're supporting the right for a woman to abort her child, but they're pastors. That's just, that's judgment. That's all it is. It's, it's judgment. In our nation, we need to cry out, you know, in repentance for our country and our nation because this is what judgment is and it, and it increases and it, it intensifies as well. Because as long as people can, the media can have that voice to push a narrative and seduce and deceive people, then we'll continue to see wrong leaders being over, you know, uh, nations and different jurisdictions and different cities and territories and lands because the people have been bewitched. And when they're bewitched, they're going to, to, to vote in the bewitchers. And that's what they do. So, uh, but I just want to take the time just to encourage you stay with the word of God. Many of you, you know, the Holy Spirit shows you things and reveals things to you. Keep standing on the wall. Keep being a watchman on the wall and sound the alarm and stand for truth. Stay with the word of God. Just because you're standing by, it may seem like you're standing by yourself. Just know that there are more that are for you than those that are against you. There are more that are for you than those uh, that are against you. When you stand with the word of God, you say what the word of God says, you are the majority. That makes you the majority because you have all the kingdom of heaven supporting you. And God gives his angels charge over you. Okay. The angels of the Lord encamp around those who fear him. Just remember that. So uh, all these attacks and nonsense that they bring up, you know, from these, you know, the, the Bible says that God is judging the earth because of the children of disobedience, because of the ones that's being disobedient. 
and going against his word. That's the reason why the judgment is coming. So all we're seeing really is people showing you who their true alliance is with, who their true allegiance is with. When they get up there, oh, I grew up in the church. I, I grew up in the, okay. And what they have to do with you right now in 2022? Because you grew up in the church when you was a child. And now you sitting up there speaking against the church. And it's something because they never show any scriptures. It's always emotional reactions, emotional responses. All right. So I just want to take the time to encourage you and also hold the things up with the word of God up to what these knuckleheads are doing out here. God bless you. Love you. Jesus name.